Good morning, boys and girls. I thought you might need a little brain break today. So, um, you know, I love reading you stories. So this is one of my favorites. It's called The Great Race of the Birds and Animals by Paul Goebel. He's one of my favorite authors. So let's open this up. The Great Race. I just love all the little footprints. Buffalo are dangerous. Stay on highway near your car. Do you know why buffaloes have long hair on their chins? Long ago, when the world was still quite new, buffaloes used to eat people. It is true. The hair on their chins is hair of the people they used to eat. Yeah, it is terrible to think about those times. And I just love the art in this book. Look at that, the buffalo are just eating up those people. Scary. The creator saw how people suffered. He heard their prayers for help. There came a day when he told Crow to call all living things together to the hills, which rise like an island from the center of the great plains. The people and buffaloes and every bird and animal heard Crow calling, and they came to the hills from all directions across the plains. The creator stood on the highest hilltop and spoke to them all. Tok, it is right that buffaloes eat people, or should people eat buffaloes instead? All you tribes of four-leggeds and wingeds will decide. There will be a race around these hills. If the buffaloes win the race, they will still eat people. But if the people win the race, they will eat the buffaloes and all four-leggeds instead. Get ready, choose your fastest runners. Join the side you want to win. The people chose a young man he had never lost a race. Even the buffaloes knew he would be hard to beat, but they had a young cow to run for them. She was everyone's favorite, and they were sure she would win. The animals joined with the buffaloes because they have four legs. The birds sided with the people because they have two legs, as we do. Each tribe chose its fastest runner. Suddenly, Wolf and Coyote raised their heads and howled. Ho, po! The runners sped away with a thunder of feet and a great wind of flying birds. The birds flew ahead like arrows. Magpie beat her wings fast and even the tiniest birds left her behind. But she had made up her mind she was going to win. She had been thinking things out and had made a plan. She flew down and sat on Buffalo's back. The day was hot. The birds were panting. And when they came to a stream, they stopped to drink. But they drank too much and then fell asleep in the trees. The animals swam past them, except for Beaver, whose legs were too short for such a long race. And he slipped into a lovely pool in the shade of the trees. Otter followed and Muskrat too. Buffalo and the young man took the lead and the larger animals were staying close behind. Magpie had not made a sound. Nobody had even noticed her sitting on Buffalo's back. Jack Rabbit was hopping along well until he saw Coyote trotting up behind him. He was so frightened that he fled out onto the plains. He is still there, always wondering who is behind him. Nobody remembers how long they raced around the hills. It was several days. Tired runners dropped out all along the way. Prairie Dog wasted his energy chattering at Hawk. Rattlesnake ate Toad and then curled up to sleep. Mouse vanished down a hole when Bear almost stepped on her. Mole and Gopher tunneled along underground and they still think the race is on. Ooh, look at that snake eating frog. Oh my gosh. The young man fell farther and farther behind Buffalo. He had run his best. Nobody could say he would have run better. Even Buffalo was almost exhausted and her head hung low. Magpie was still clinging to the thick woolly fur of Buffalo's back. But when Buffalo saw the finishing line, she ran faster in a final effort. All the four-legged animals watching from the hillsides cheered her. They were quite sure she was the winner. 
Suddenly, Magpie flew up from Buffalo's back. Everyone had forgotten about her. She was feeling good and was not tired at all. Magpie flew up towards the sun and then she swooped down squawking and squawking and crossed the finishing line just in front of Buffalo. A great shout of people and birds filled the air. She was sure clever. Magpie, the slowest of all the birds, had won the race for the two leggeds. Ho heck tu Welo. The chiefs of the Buffalo Nation told the people, that was a fair race. Now we are under your power. You will eat us. Oh no. And then the creator spoke to the people. Use your power wisely. Look after all things that I have made, even the smallest of them. They are all your relatives. Make yourselves worthy of them and give thanks always. After that, the people were shown how to make bows and arrows and they were given horses. They hunted the buffaloes when they needed meat. Nobody ever harms magpie. The people have always been grateful to the birds for taking their side in the great race. They honor them when they wear their beautiful feathers. We can all be a little like the birds. They leave the earth with wings and we can also leave the world by letting our thoughts rise as high as the birds fly. It is also told that Magpie flew so near the sun that the sun's iridescent colors are in her tail. And in the night sky, what we know as the Milky Way are the clouds of dust raised by the runners. The great race was the start of many things. Okay, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed the story. See you next time.